Yes, we are good to go, ladies and gentlemen. One, five, six, silence in the building. <laughs> Fellas, we appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us. Uh, if you could, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now and plug or promote anything you'd like. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm Kyle. I play drums in 156. Appreciate you being here. Where Where and, uh, are you right now in the world, Kyle? Oh, fuck. My bad. Uh, <laughs> like, Bel Air, Ohio. Oh, you're living out in Bel Air, baby. Hell yeah. Give me that hell, yeah. No, hell no. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like, it's like family dollar Bel Air. For sure. Will Luke, Smith did not get sent there. What about yourself, Lucas? Uh, Lucas Booker. I play bass in 156, and I'm in Leedsburg, Pennsylvania right now. How do you guys know each other if you're located in different places? How did, how did the initial, how did you link up to be in this project? Um, I've known Kyle in, he was in a bunch of different bands that a lot of local bands that I would be in would play with as well. And we've both seen 156 before live. So like we've always just like crossed paths and stuff like that. But I guess it just took till now to finally like link up and get going. So you guys are essentially the, the newest members of 156. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I I joined back in like 2019. Uh, and Lucas, when did you join? Like about a year ago, around yeah, around, my, ago. Uh, around February last year. Yeah. Hell yeah! Congratulations on uh, being on Sharp Tone Records. That's awesome. How long? Uh, how long did you? From when you sign to hush hush we can't tell anybody until the announcement's made how much time goes in between that um dude honestly it wasn't a super long time i'd say i think i think it was probably just like a few months to be honest with you like we we were like chatting a bit and then once like we they're actually like all right yeah let's you know they sent like a contract and stuff i think between the time we signed the contract the time we announced, I want to say it, it wasn't more than like three or four months, probably. Well, I wasn't even around at that time. I've never, <laughs> yeah. I've never dealt with anything like that before, actually. Like, this is pretty much the biggest platform that I've been on. That is awesome. Now, when when you when you sign, like for for bands that are that are excited to to sign a contract, what happens right after that? I imagine they're like, okay, let's get some videos done. We're gonna drop all these things at once. Everybody knows who you are on all these platforms. Like what is, what does a label do once you've turned in that contract? What do they say? Okay, let's do this first. Let's do this second. What happens? Okay, so so for us, um, Irrational Pull was already out. So we had already released it and we already had like, you know, our videos for it and everything. Like we had already done our album rollout. So I, I feel like normally a label would like go into like an album release, like announce a band with like an album rollout, but I feel like it was a little different for us. Um, so then what they wanted to do for us is they wanted us to do like a deluxe edition of a rational poll so they could re-release it under sharp tone. So then that's when we recorded uh, Vexation and No Angel and then the Them Bones cover. Um, so that way there's just a little something extra on it. Cause if yep. you see, yeah, there's the, the deluxe edition there. Cause before we, it was, cool. the rational poll was originally like self-released. So, um, and then, and then we did like a video for vexation and, and whatnot. And, and then, then yeah. and then pleasure's gone was, is kind of the new single, right? That you guys have just put out. Yeah. We, uh, we dropped that single on, um, the, the day the album came out, which, which, uh, but I think, wasn't it Pleasure's Gone the first video we shot for this, though, Lucas? If Pleasure's Gone, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was really I, cold, this... it was in the woods. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, for those that may not know what you guys sound like, let's jam it real quick so they can kind of get used to uh, your tunes. Pardon? Hell yeah, it's so good. Lloyd. Got a little plot, <laughs> got a little plot and you vibes there. I hear that a little bit. What? I love me some plot. Lloyd, what's a, a couple questions you have as a fellow as well? I queue some other stuff up real quick. 
Um, so you guys were all chilling outside, and an alien came out of nowhere and landed next to you, and it was like, show me your best song or I'm going to blow up the world. <laughs> what song of yours would you show the alien? The best song? Your uh, best song. Or the world's going to blow up. Man. Show us music now. Come on, time to run out. Come on, they're, they're asking you. You gotta save the day. Uh, what song of yours would you use? You must show me your best well, song now. I would give them The Rodents Race, because that's like my personal favorite off the newest album. The Rodents Race? Dude, I would probably have to give them... If Pleasure's Gone, man. Honestly. like that's, yeah, that's that, that song's is. a fucking ripper, dude. That's probably yeah. my favorite song to play live. Uh, I, I think uh, you would have uh, saved the world with that one. I can dude. See Lucas, oh, what, yeah. what is the one that you said, high. Lucas? Well, oh, I, I said the rodents race, but also high dive and a low well, man. This song's crazy. You only pick one. He only asked for one. Fine. They're busy. Uh, they're uh, aliens. The, the, the Lucas, rodents you're dead. Race. Rodents okay. race. You said two songs. You're out. Let's do. Let's do the rodents race. Is which one would you say? From a from a instrumental perspective, is the hardest one to play. Like Dude, you literally, yeah, I knew you, I I was yeah, like going to ask this. This is the hardest one for me too. <laughs> it just has it, it just it's has hard really, fills and, and hard riffs that are just tricky. The fill the fills are like they're not too crazy for me, but it's like my right foot just doesn't stop the whole time, and then like the chorus of like the song is like double bass and shit. So it's like. It's just like a very athletic song. Like, it just takes a lot out of me, but, you know. Is it towards the end of the set, in the middle, or in the beginning? Do you like to get out of the uh, way early, or you I, want to save her for last? We've never played the song live, actually. What? What? <laughs> well, yeah, dude, we just dropped Narrative. We haven't, I mean, we've only been playing, like, two or three songs, but we won't, we're only playing, like, singles. You know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. Let's check it out. Actually, before we check it out, let me ask you guys a question real quick. If I was to do a little trivia with you, and you can only pick one movie or TV show, you've seen this movie or TV show a hundred times. If I ask you trivia about it, you will not get it incorrect. Dude, fuck. I, uh, I'll give you a second to think about it. I'll give you a second to think about it. How do you guys typically write a song? Like, how, what's the what's the process from... We start with the riff, or I have a I have a dope drum beat. Then we kind of like let's just say we're in your jam session, and you guys are about to start a new song. What do you? What is the typical process? So, Jim is the main man. He he get he comes with the riffs. He's like he'll be like, all right, I got some riffs. He does like a lot of shit guitar pro. Like he'll he'll like write songs on guitar. Sometimes he writes them in guitar pro. I feel like most of the time he's sitting there with a guitar in his hand though. Yeah. But he'll either like send us like these like MIDI sounding guitars. Like kinda just like, like straight like up to do that. I used to use yeah. Tabit to do stuff like that. Yeah, he'll send us that, or he'll just you know so that way we kind of know the riff beforehand. Then we come to practice, and then you we can play along of... with it too, which helps a lot. So you hear yeah. like the whole picture. Yep. Dude, Smart honestly, writing like with because like we have like click tracks and stuff live. When like for my like scratch guitar in my ear, I use the fucking Guitar Pro MIDI guitar. I don't even use a real guitar, just because nice. it's like it's clean and cut, and I can hear it like you know better than like a, a regular guitar i guess all right fair enough uh Lloyd, i'm still look <laughs> i'm still looking for uh, a question I, i'm not too super familiar with guitar pro you mean that's like a like a vst or something it's a tablature program oh, yeah. okay okay you can make, you so can make number tabs and uh you can do guitar bass and drums on it and you can like put the time same turn whatnot on it and jim just uses to write it yeah it's just he'll, like give she- a, he'll give us like skeletons of like He'll give us little riffs that aren't really like dolled up yet, and then like we all come together and make the songs better. But he comes with like just like you know like little ideas, and then we just like try and branch off of each other. And when I was in a band of Truth Among Wolves, my vocalist Johnny would literally send me these like three minute like masterpiece like uh, <laughs> tablatures where he got the synth on it, he got even vocal lines yeah. on it, drums, guitar, yep. and I could hear the whole process of it before we went and recorded. And I think it's a lost art that people do that. That Jim, that's exactly what Jim does. Yep, like if I were to open a Guitar Pro, sticks. it's yeah. got all the synths, everything to a T fucking mapped out, which is nice because like when we move into our demoing process, I literally just drop all that MIDI in. I, I use nope. Reaper. I just drop it all into Reaper 
and like it just makes everything super easy and then jim can drop it into like he uses fl studio and like gets the sense ready and stuff like it just that's makes cool. the process like 10 it's just a lot of patience i never had patience for it i started to learn how to do it and then i was like no this, like yeah. this dude's bending this i don't even know what to click for that fuck this i'm done <laughs> a little tedious uh, I I do have a SpongeBob question, but I couldn't really find a good one here. But I know I've seen all pretty much all the SpongeBob movies. I have a six year old. This is your trivia. In the SpongeBob movie, the most recent one, the one that's kind of like a digital animation one, there's a western scene because their car breaks down. Who is the bad guy actor Dennis. in that part? That is. No, no, no! It's like I, you. It's like actually the real actors in the scene. Uh, like the voice actors. Well, this is like a real actor in movies uh, is in this. So you know this western scene where like Snoop Dogg's in there and there's a big dancing sequence in the oh, new. Oh, the most. The mo I thought you were talking about like the first animated one. The most oh, recent no. movie, the part where Snoop Dogg's at the one, bar. Actually, I'm, 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 I haven't I'm watched it. Then you're a shitty SpongeBob fan. Then that's a stop. How dare you, <laughs> bro? I thought about mine. I don't know. I that and was, I was just gonna a say suggestion. South Park. I was that was just a suggestion for Lucas. Lucas, I, you know what? South Park will probably be more suited for him. I, yeah, that's my bad. Well, nope. they're changing their show now, bro. They punked themselves. I got plenty of time to do no, South Park. No worries. But that's a stump. Do you guys have any hot sauce nearby? You don't have to bro, do this. We talk. We talk. I got it right. Here. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Okay. Bro, I came prepared for the sauce. Nobody got the question right. Why would you do So I'm going to take a shot, but in addition to that, I'm going to take a swig. I'm just going to grab a random one. This is Hawaiian Lava Flow Hot Sauce. <laughs> and uh, while we take I a swig... A yeah, go for it. If uh, <laughs> I like these random scenario questions. If I put you Cheers, guys Kyle. in front of... If I put you guys in front of an auditorium of a bunch of old people and you had to describe the meaning or sound behind your band, like what your band stands for, how would you describe it to old people? Yeah. Um... Scary time. <laughs> Scary time. Uh, <laughs> Danny Trejo was the answer we were loud, looking for. Loud, yelly stuff. Yeah. Loud, yelly stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> who, who are you guys? Who are you guys jamming? Let's say like freshman year in high school. What what CD is on repeat that damn near makes you want to be a better a better musician? Kyle, freshman do you want to start? I have to. I I don't know if I could say freshman year, dog. Like. But, like, in high school, dude, I was listening to, like, a fuck ton of Dance Gavin Dance. That Hell yeah. I was, like, dude, like, like Downtown Battle Mountain 2. Whew, that I mean, that shit's still fire. But I, I was listening to that. Um, I prefer the Kurt era, I personally. I was, I was in, like, post-hardcore, dude. So I was listening to, like, Hail the Sun. I liked Demarosa. I liked Dance Gavin Dance. Any of those, like... DGD I got adjacent you. band. The Swan Core. The Swan Core scene. Yeah. What Swan was your Corps. favorite Dance Gavin Dance song? Song? Yeah. Brother, that's tough. I don't, I don't even know if I can pick that. The I literally, I have a Dance Gavin Dance tattoo on my chest. Like, so I have a Chiodos tattoo and I can name powder, song. I mine's know, Powder, little powder little. to the People. That's my favorite one. Powder to the People? See, all right. So my favorite Dance Gavin Dance album is Downtown Battle Mountain 2. So I feel like it has to pick something off that. Probably Blue Dream. Yeah, you got a hot girl in the car and you're like, yo, check this band out. This is like the best song from them. What would you pick? Well, sheesh. Uh, <laughs> dude. Per uh, well, see, if that, that, that's a fucked up question. Cause if nah. Like, no, she wants to hear DGD. Introduce her. What would you give her? What are you going to get her hooked on? Listen to me. She wants the D. GD. <laughs> So if you're trying if you're trying to play something smooth for someone off that album, you're probably gonna play Blue Dream. Yep. Okay. But my personal choice would be Purple Rain. Okay. That Purple song, Rain. That's a that's a slept on song on that album for sure. Very true. Okay. All right. Heck yeah. Good answer. She'll probably give you a smooch later. So I imagine there's some stuff you're not allowed to tell us that Sharp Tome has planned for you guys. What can Better you tell, tell us that is coming out the rest of the year that you won't get in trouble? Yeah, give us a leak. Give us some. Dude, nothing. Uh, this this <laughs> nothing. tour with Great American Ghost and the Hazing Over, full Dog. US. That's Literally. about it. Hell like, yeah. Was like, getting I'll, signed I'll, to I'll everything you... you right now. 
I'll be real with you right now, and I'll tell you the one thing because I asked Jim before. I was like, "What can I not talk about?" Because I was like, "I'm an idiot. Like, I'll fuck up and like, I'll spill all." <laughs> Don't tell us like, that. We'll expose but, you. But like, 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 dog. All right. Yeah, we're working on a new album right now. Like, was getting signed everything you thought excellent. it would be? Like, was it instantly life changing, or you feel it's going to be a while before it's life changing? No, it's it's a it's a it's like a. You feel the growth over time for sure. It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not like a life changing thing. You're not getting fucking like a fat check off the rip. Like this is. It's not like we're signing like Universal or something. But yeah. at the same time, it's did you a get very... a fat check? Did you get a check though? No. Damn. Like, it's coming. Like, it's coming. Like, like you know, like every every band that's on a label and shit, they like you get budgets for like albums and videos and stuff. Like it's nice to not have to like front that cost. True. Right? Yeah. For sure. For sure. Like. That's definitely a plus. And usually, all you gotta do, do they, stand back. Do they provide like, like a touring van if you didn't have one? I I think so. Some I I feel like some labels they do like it depends on the contract because some of them offer like something. It's like a touring thing, and I don't know if you could use that for that. But nah, dude, like <laughs> we bought we bought our own van. We've had this van. Good for you. Forever. Hell yeah. They, they've had this van since before I was in the band, actually. Yeah. Uh, we have a chat question. Uh, Mac Attack wants to know: Has there been a band that you guys have played that blew you away, like made you guys go "Whoa"? Like personally, yeah. Maybe they opened for you at a show and they were just a, a local. For you, you played with them. They were the headliner. Like, what what band made you go uh, "Quote Whoa"? Like it's Orthodox uh, for me. Orthodox. That band is so incredible. I will say, like and Orthodox. Orthodox is a band that once you see live, like if you didn't get it just listening to them off the record, once you oh. see them live, you'll be like, I understand now. Oh, like they're so that's good. A, that's they're a amazing. fucking incredible band to see live. Like, oh man, Kublai Khan is another one. Like that, True. Dude, they just they write ass beaters, dude. Like that band's so sick. Uh, um, Your spirit dies. Very good. I love that band. From Joy. Yeah, From Joy. Them. They're From incredible. Joy. I love that band. Crazy Texans. They're awesome. Dude, there seeing you go. them live is nuts. The most important question I've asked you all day. Psych! South Park Trivia. What was the name of Cartman's Christian rock band? Oh, so Faith Plus One. Faith Plus One is correct! Yeah, hell yeah! He knew right away. Oh, it's about to get weird. It's about to get weird. I have to continue the interview wearing a, a beer helmet. Let's go, baby. <laughs> uh, if if you guys were on, let's say you're on the tour. It's it's a thirty city tour. Who, but uh, you're on the final date. You just played for 10,000. It's the best show of the entire uh, the entire run. Who can out party? Who's the last man standing after we're all we're all binge drinking and, and uh, enjoying some doobies? Who's the last man standing? Jack. Zach. Jack oh, or, yeah, or myself. I, I okay, like, okay, Lucas. I, I feel like I can party with the best of them. Bro, you cannot hang with Jack. So I can't hang with Jack, but I can still hang. Bro, I know an Xbox that says you can't hang with Jack. Yeah, leave Ooh. me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You guys pit against each other. This is funny. Is there is there a particular oh, is there a particular all, all, all country? Kind of nerds, man. We 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 like to go to bed. <laughs> Fair. That that is true. That like our band does not party. We are not like a party band. Lot. Like like Some five time. out of six of us are not five. Like, four out of five of us smoke weed but like no one's you know really smoke like a party or anything like that. it takes a minute for me to prep the beer helmet if i put the thingies in but it's too full it overflows i can still oh, hear you guys up. from here you though get the beer in there i'm working on it i'm working on it uh <laughs> fellas what's what's one last song of yours maybe something off narrative that we that we have not had a chance to play that you would recommend we do play uh uh yo i don't see that Scroll one back. on there Scroll back. It's like half of the album's my favorite part. Uh, He's bossy, bro. Scroll the fuck down. You heard him? Oh. Oh. Why are you coming at me like this, Lloyd? I like you guys. I feel like we would all get along. Oh, absolutely, man. Hell yeah. Um, hey, BG's the good one. I'm the smart ass of the group. I gotta, I gotta poke. I'm the nice one. <laughs> Dude, honestly, okay. So, like, 
I feel like I feel like "Stay Away" is going to be a slept on song. Oh, the slept on, the slept on. I love that song, but like, I feel like I I know I feel like people are either going to be like, "This is the jam," or they're just going to get slept on. I like another loss as well. Let's Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Who gets the, who gets? The let's try. It. Let's Rock, do "Stay Away." Shoot. Let's do "Stay Away" because that was the first one that kind of came to mind. Yo, who did you guys have to be the producer for the album? Uh, fuck, Andy Nelson. I don't know why I drew blank on that. I love Uncle Andy. But yeah, yeah Andy Nelson is a fucking dude. What band is he in? Uh, is he, he played he... guitar for Weekend Nachos, actually. Weekend, Weekend Nachos. Nachos? I like that. I like that. Andy like that. is, oh, uh, I love that man so much. He's fucking the dude. Do you guys play video games? And if so, what's uh, the three best video games? Three best video games? That's fucked up. I'm a huge <laughs> fucking nerd. I play so many video games, dude. Like, prove it. Prove it. What, what do you want to see? I'm, like, I'm, my, I'm what are your three top here. ones? Right now or all time? All time. All time? Fuck. Uh, I'd probably say OG Resident Evil 2 is my favorite of all time. Fair. That's, that's like my favorite series. Uh, it's a great one. Fucking, I played the remake and it just didn't feel the same. That OG. Bro, the remake so. was great though. It was. It was. Good. The, the dude, the lack of the spot. Like honestly, biggest disappointment was the fucking alligator fight mm -hmm. and the lack of spiders. I was so excited to see some big ass, gross fucking spiders in that game, and then I got some dumb fucking like mashed potatoes and gravy blobs just like <laughs> going around, and I'm like, what the fuck is this, bro? Like, I'm like, this is corny as hell. Not cool. But the remake was sick. I do, I do fuck with it. Like you're a spooky boy. I like spooky games. I just wish they fucking remake Dino Crisis already. Dude. Oh, Dino Crisis for real. I was thinking about this the other Wait, day. You, you said you want me to prove that like I'm a big fucking nerd. Yeah. Sure. Now that you're bringing it up again, what are you about to bring out? What are you bringing out? What you got? He's I really excited to show us this. <laughs> He's so excited. I'm he is excited. I, his I'm excitement so got excited. me excited. All right, what you got? What's your trinket? What's my trinket, dog? Yeah, we'll just show us your wares. Steam Deck, baby, let's go. Damn, he got the yeah! new name. <laughs> Hell yeah. Awesome. I thought about getting it, but it's like I already have like an overpowered gaming PC. Why bother? Yeah. Do you travel at all? No, I, I live in my room. I do, I do. Quietness. They're if nice. You if you travel and you play PC games, like... Yeah, I play. I can, I can see that working. I'm going to have to look into, fucking, this, look into the Steam Deck. Been, like... Uh, working on demos and shit on Sunday, so we've been meeting up at Jim's house, and uh, I've just been bringing my Steam Deck for Lucas, I'm like, here you go, and he's just been playing Splitgate on it. <laughs> yes, yeah, Mr. Booker, what's your favorite game? Um, I, I'm kind of like a casual player. I, I like card games and shit, so my favorite game is like Need for Speed Underground 2. Okay. Like, that's one of my favorites. Uh, Most Wanted is sick. Uh, oh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, like the, Halo 3, I really like Halo. Out of what's all your, games, Halo is like my favorite. What's your okay. favorite car of all time? You seem to like cars. Favorite car? Uh, I like Porsche 911 turbos. Okay. Heck we'll get yeah. you one for Christmas, maybe. Oh, dude, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. nice A Micro Machines one, maybe. We'll send it to you in the mail. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> fellas, we got time for one final question. This actually is a serious question. I ask every guest we have on the show this one. I feel weird asking it with the beer well, helmet on. Stop smiling. It's serious. But, uh, what is what is a piece of music advice somebody in the industry um, uh, has told you guys that was kind of like a game changer or an eye opener or a terrible mistake you made early on in your career that you don't want a band that's just starting out to make? And you can't say our show. Bro. Man, I, I'll be real with you. You said we got time for one more question and I was like, only one more? I was like, damn, I'm having fun. Anyways. Aww. But for real, like that's a, that's oh tough because there's so much advice I could give to like bands that you know. But what's really something have. that stood out? What's something you always go to? What you go to? Uh, fucking tour. Go tour. play shows. Get yourself in front of as yeah. many people yeah, as you okay. can. That's a that's a big fucking deal. Get yourself in front of as many people as you can. So let me ask you, you know, this. Wait, wait. To, to follow up that question, do you do you believe bands should play as many shows as they can in a month, or only play? three legit shows in one month as opposed to 10 just whatever shows bro like when you're trying to grow as a band now i'm not saying play as many shows as you can in your area because yeah. that's, that's dumb as hell like yeah. 
if if you can play as many shows as you can in a month traveling to different areas do that you know okay. what i mean because like you want to build yourself up in your local market for sure you don't but you don't want to be that band that's fucking playing every weekend like because then people are going to be like yeah i can see this band any weekend i want like when yeah. you want to you want to maybe play like two to three local shows a year like mm-hmm. and then you really want to just be like trying to hit other markets traveling out you know maybe if you you have to start with weekenders or week-long tours you know branch out a little bit this way this way but eventually like you know you want to start really just getting yourself out there getting yourself in front of other people and i mean dude it's 2022 you have to have a good social media presence like that's very important as well even depends on like how big you are too because like if you're just starting out of course like be a sponge and play all shows that you can but like if you want to start doing circuits and stuff like that like you kind of got to you kind of got to like strike where the iron's hot and like kind of like calculate your shows in order to get like calculating. Most... Yeah. You, you kind of got to like, instead of just being like, yo, we'll go out just be like, yo, like what are we like? You know, you just got to kind of think about stuff like that because there's going to be to, a, there's going to be a point where you're tor- hopefully where you're touring so much. So you don't really have to plan shows like that. And you can just go out and that's how it is. But it takes a little bit. There's like different stages, I guess, to it. Just depends on where you're at. <laughs> yeah, you guys look like strong lads. Uh, my last question would be: If I made your entire band fist fight to like the <laughs> knockout, who would win? Who do you think's uh, got it? Dude, it would it would it would end with probably Jack and Ryan. Yeah, Ryan and Jack. Yeah. I don't know who would win between those two. Honestly, I, I literally I couldn't tell you. Like, don't mess with those guys. Cookies. They're just they're big. And, and it's strong. funny because Jack isn't Jack Ryan. Like a character in a movie, isn't that the name of a character that Tom Cruise? Uh, yeah, some, some show, yeah. I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of Jack Reacher. Never mind, Jack oh. Reacher. Fail, Damn complete I'm fail, complete fail. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, this was a lot of fun, man. We appreciate you guys stopping by. Narrative superb. If you're watching and you guys enjoyed hanging out with uh with 156 Silence, please go throw them a follow sure on Spotify. Did. They totally deserve it. Uh, everything we heard today was superb. Pleasure. Uh, I think it's called If Pleasure's Gone is, is my personal favorite. But uh, there's a ton of jams that you guys have. They're just wicked. Stay safe on the road. If you come to California, please let me know ahead of time so I can get some people involved and try to come out and support you guys. We're going Where? to Sacramento, right? I'm in We're Southern California, so about an We're hour from LA. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna Where are you guys playing in Sacramento? Uh, uh, I could pull it up. At this uh, this place called... You don't know off the top of your head? Come on, man. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> hold on. I'll, I'll play it up right now. This place called. Uh, <laughs> we'll be there on. <laughs> <laughs> the boardwalk still a thing in Sacramento? That's why I was asking. I've never been there. Ace, Ace of Spades or the boardwalk. If memory serves correct, pretty much like every place except for like. It is Jack. It is Jack Ryan. I was right. John Krasinski is Jack okay. Ryan. I was right. So, Thank you. In LA, we're playing 1720 okay. on uh, yep. November 9th. And then uh, we're playing in Sacramento on the 10th, we're playing Gold, Goldfield Trading Post. I'm, okay. November 9th, Lizzie. Let's let's do our best to go support uh, 1720. On, 1720 on, is. is uh, you, know, you guys know who owns 1720? No. Travis Richter, the screamer of from first to last. What? Are you serious? He owns 1720. Yo. So he's he's almost always there if he's not on tour with uh if if I die first uh he's Yo, he's there he's there all the time so, he, so if you see him if you see him tell him local band smoke out says what's shows. up but uh hey, tell him to get on our show because <laughs> we're about we're about to hang your show out if you don't say local band smoke out during your set I'm gonna I'm gonna roundhouse kick <laughs> all I of you in the head you, I promise you just kick me in the face no matter what Jack mosh all local band smoke out. I want video. You guys rule. You guys rule. You guys Kyle, Kyle, Lucas, we appreciate it, man. You guys, you guys are awesome, man. Narrative is superb. Please support the band. Please check out Narrative. Please hit them up on, on Spotify. Hit the follow button. Check out all their music videos on Sharp Tone Records and some of their older stuff. Not on Sharp Tone Records, but in general, you guys are cool as hell, man. We could hang anytime, any, any day of the week. You're invited back whenever you like. Please don't be strangers. But, gentlemen, this is a lot of fun. I appreciate you. Hit me up on Instagram. Thank you, guys. Yeah. 156 silence! Give me a hell yeah. Cheers, fellas. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>